welcome to All Around the House. I'm Tom Hudson, host of our program, and today we're going to start a really a two-part segment. The, the first part is going to be on entrance doors and systems, uh, a little bit of basic knowledge on locks, and then on our next segment, we're actually going to install a steel door. We've got one that is in not very good shape here at the store, and we're going to take it out and put a new one in. First, everybody comes into the store with an awful lot of questions. Uh, so many of them with uh, a little bit of knowledge that they go at home, they can answer an awful lot of questions to themselves before they come in. Uh, people will come in and they'll say, you know, Tom or Bill or whomever they're talking to, my front door is bad, I want a new door. Or I've got a bad lock. Uh, our first question back to them might be, well, what size door do you have? And a lot of people have no idea what size door they have. So we're going to do some very basic things on doors, then actually look at doors, see what you should look for when you're buying a door. No matter where you shop, as you look around, certain things that you want to do to make sure that you get your money's worth and you get a quality door. Uh, entrance systems, as you'll see when we get started, will vary in price. Uh, you can buy a steel door for all the way from as low as $90, and we've sold steel doors for you know several thousand dollars. So it's almost like the car market. You can, the range, whatever you want to spend, uh, is, is the entrance system that you will end up with. First, let's start with locks. People come in often. Uh, and they'll say, I need a lock for my front door. Uh, it's bad. Well, many times the lock probably isn't that bad. Uh, it's one of those things like we talked about once before with like garage doors. Uh, we never maintain them until something goes wrong. Most people never worry about the lock on their home, uh, front door, side door, whatever, until it doesn't work right. Or they put the key in and it's very stiff. Uh, it doesn't pop open as easily. Most of these things are very, very basic maintenance and you don't even need a new lock. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people bring locks in either to the lumber yard or up to the hardware store. And we can take that lock and probably for two dollars make it come out looking like a brand new lock. Uh, just some really very basic maintenance. Uh, and you probably should bring the lock in because there are some little intricacies to locks. Uh, springs, pins, how they're keyed and whatever and it takes us probably five minutes and it'll take you an awful lot longer. So let's look at a few basic locks. And that's going to lead us into our entrance systems because there are two basic locks that people put on the homes. And this is where they end up sometimes with a lot of problem. And let's just start. This happens to be a quick set lock. Regular old front door. There are quick sets. There are schlags. There are wisers. There are nationals. Many, many different doors. Many, many different lock companies. This one, very simple, very basic. It's the kind maybe a lot of you have at home. You know, you push the thing in to lock it. When you put the key in, it turns, it pops the thing, and it opens the door. Key in the front, just like all of them. Slides in. Turns, and hopefully into the home we go. Simple task. I don't care if it's a Schlage or a Weiser or a National or whose lock that you have. They're all going to work very basically the same. The biggest problem we have when people come in to buy a lock, maybe it is a lock that's broken. They've lost the keys. They have renters. Uh, the people have moved out or they want to secure the house for other reasons. They want the keys changed or a new lock. First of all, before you buy a new lock, Chances are very good that at one of the stores or, or a lot of places can rekey that lock for you. And by that all I mean is that they can take this little tumbler out of here where you put the key in. This piece does come out. We can change keys, rekey the inside of this lock. You can use the same lock for two dollars and fifty cents is what we charge to rekey it. For two fifty, you've got a lock that the old key won't work and you're in business without spending another $12 for an entrance lock. So there's a lot of things that you can do to, to rekey these locks before you even need a new lock. But what usually happens is this. People will come in and what they'll do is they'll buy the lock and they'll go home and they'll come back and they say it doesn't fit. Uh, it doesn't fit usually because all they have is what they call the long bolt. 
This little thing you've all seen, usually you don't see this whole thing. All you see is this little part here when you open and close the door. Uh, when the knob is on, let's see if we can just put this in quick. This is inside the door, and of course when you turn the knob, it pulls back and the door opens. This is called the bolt. All you really see of this mechanism in the door is just this front edge. The whole back side is actually in the door itself. And that's where the problem lies. If you were to buy this lock set, this is called a two and three quarter inch back set. Well, here's almost the same thing. It's a bolt, but it's what they call a two and three eighths back set. And this is now where we're going to lead into steel doors, entrance systems. What door do you have now? Uh, we'll draw a little picture explaining our first problem and how we can get around that when you come in to look at a lock or a steel door. Not the world's greatest artist, Joanna, but here's what we're going to start with. We'll start with the door and I'll make it just this top section, we'll say. Here's the doorknob. Herein lies the first question that people always have a problem with. They'll come in to buy a lock, and we just talked about bolts. There are either what they call a two and three quarter back set, or a two and three eighths. And what that means is to the center of this opening, the center of the hole, is either two and three eighths to the center, or two and three quarter to the center. In other words, this hole is off just a little bit. Now, most all the new doors on the market today, whether it's a steel door, a fiberglass door, we're going to talk about the different type of doors too. We're going to talk about a steel door system. We're going to talk about what are its benefits, what are its drawbacks. Is it as good as an insulated door as a wood door? We're going to discuss, uh, how about these fiberglass doors? Uh, are they any good? Because there's so many different things on the market. So we're going to go through those a little bit too. But most all your new doors, whether they're fiberglass or they're steel, you're going to find are what they call a two and three quarter inch back set. And that means that that hole is set back from the door two and three quarters of an inch. Now when I lived on Highland Avenue, uh, my back set was only two and three eighths. So if I took a bolt home that was two and three quarters, it wouldn't fit. That's, so one of the first things we'll ask you when you come in to buy a lock is do you need a two and three quarter or a two and three eighths back set? And that's just, all you would do then at home is you'd measure the distance from the edge of this door to the center of that hole. And it's either going to be two and three eighths or it's going to be two and three quarter. Now we're going to show you that on the door itself. In a minute we're going to take a door and we're going to open it up and Ron's going to give us a hand and we're going to start doing a little bit of work on a lock set with a door and then work our way into installation and the good and the bad things that you should look for in a door. First though, and Joanna's doing a great job here today. We're going to just pan it at a few doors and give you an idea of what we talked about prices. Give you some good examples. A door very similar to this. There's so many door names out there. There's Permador, there's Stanley, there's Everstrait. It just goes on and on. All of them are, are pretty good, good doors. But you can buy a very plain door like this door. Entrance system, steel door, probably from about $90 and up. Now you work your way up the ladder. We're just going to kind of work across Joanna to take a look at some of these. Uh, this is a peach tree door, another maker. In fact, we're going to show you four different brands of doors. Uh, the first one was a perma door, and they have very fancy doors too. This one is called a, new, uh, a peach tree, Newport. It's not steel, but it looks really almost like wood. They've done a real nice job. And this door does not come like this. The door kind of comes a cream color, and then you stain it the color that you want to stain it. So this is a fiberglass door. We're going to move over and look at a, a Stanley door. This is called a Prodigy. Now we're getting a little more fancy and we're getting a little more money. And Joanna, you can even close in and look at the price, $648. Now we've gone a long way from $100. We've got a lot different door. Uh, this also is a door that comes to you kind of a cream color. It's going to be stained any color you want. You notice this one is, is stained a much darker than the one we just looked at. It's got some beautiful glass in it, and again, that's one of the reasons that the money begins to go up in a door 
is when you start to add glass, they get expensive. This one happens to have leaded glass panels in it, becomes even more expensive. And then we'll go over and look at one more door. This is a Thermatru door. Uh, again, it's, it's not a steel door, it's a fiberglass. We're going to talk about warranties on these doors also. I think you'll be surprised how long they're warranted. This door, the two beautiful insets, they're leaded, they're actually beveled inside. The glass is beveled, it's all insulated. And now we're up to, see Joanna, we're up to almost $900 on this entrance system. And how does the price go on? Well, a side light is the thing that you can put on the side of a door. Uh, there's a good picture here, John. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. But here's basically a door with no glass, and what they have the two side lights on the side for glass. This also will bring us back to talk a little bit about locks. As we, we come back and we look at these locks, and we're going to look at a few pictures and talk a little bit about some security. Just to give you an idea, this is just anybody's pamphlet. They're all beautiful. Uh, if I have to tilt that a little bit, Joanna, you just let me know so it doesn't glare. Good example, beautiful entrance system, and those are side lights. You can buy it with only one side light. You can put a side light on both sides. You can do just about anything you want to do to these door systems. It's just how much money do you want to spend. Good example, some people have a wider opening. What can they do? Well, in this case, we've got kind of a French style. Another example, the oval glass. Again, price-wise, gorgeous, but we've really moved up in our price range. Most people, here's a, here's a simple door, a picture of a door with the side lights. Now notice this also begins to bring us to a security problem. I thought about security. Uh, how secure is that door? If you really want in the home, it's kind of easy to break the glass, reach inside, and uh, open the door. So what you're going to find on a lot of these doors, and we're going to show you some pictures of others, and some very basic doors. These aren't going to be real pretty because, and by the way, none of these doors come looking as nice as I just showed you in the pictures. They're very drab. They come in, some of them a light blue, a light gray. And, and what they do is it's a primed coat, and you have to finish the doors. So those ones that I've, that I've showed, uh, have shown you earlier, don't really come in those colors, and they're not that gorgeous. They're going to come more looking not out of pink, but here are some very basic ones that we sell most all the time. These doors will get into the uh, $180, $200 range into the steel. And again, the majority of the doors that we sell are going to be in that price range. We're going to look real quick at locks, and then I'm going to bring Ron in, and we're going to start to take a door apart here a little bit to let you look at it uh, before the next time that we actually put a door in. A deadbolt. People come in and they say to us, my insurance company and some insurance companies will give you a better rate if you have a deadbolt. What is a deadbolt? Well, a deadbolt is a little stronger lock. And in this case, I'm going to get a deadbolt out and show you. And when a deadbolt opens and it extends, again, this is into the door. You see we've got a bigger actually a heavier piece of metal that goes through into the door and locks in much more firm than this little piece here that we showed earlier. A deadbolt is stronger. In many cases, people will have a regular lock, and then above it, you'll see a deadbolt. And this, of course, I've got the inside pull out right now, but you'll see the two together and key them together and use the same key. Uh, that's easy to do. Any place can rekey those. This one happens to be called a single cylinder deadbolt. And what that means, you put it together a little bit so it looks more like a lock you're used to seeing from the outside. From the outside, that's the picture that we're going to have. On the inside, because this is what they call a single cylinder, we'll have this look on the inside. Cylinder, all that means is it takes a key. So in this door lock, to unlock the deadbolt from inside the home, all you have to do is turn the latch. That's a single cylinder. It has one cylinder, one keyed side. A double cylinder has a cylinder just like this on both sides. So to open the deadbolt from the inside, if it's locked, you really have to use a key. Uh, what's the purpose of that? Well, as we showed some of the doors with side lights, 
If you've got a nice piece of glass there, what good is a deadbolt if I can tap the glass out and reach in? So if you've got, and just turn a little, 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 little latch, that's kind of easy to open. Whereas if you've got to have a key on the other side, that does make it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to take a door now, and we're going to fade out just for a moment, put this mic on Ron, and we're going to actually bring a steel door in, open it, let you take a look at one before it's been painted, what it's really about, tell you some things that you should look at uh, before you actually come in to look at the steel doors because you'll help yourself get off to a better start. So we'll slide over and take a look at one of these doors. Okay, we've got Ron with us again, and now we've got a very basic steel door, and as I said earlier, they don't come to you in that gorgeous blue or green to match the house and siding or, or the shutters. Uh, this is basically the way most of the steel doors come to you. Uh, it's a rust proof, basically, it's primed, it's ready for you to finish. Uh, we're going to now talk about this, a little bit about the locks. What you should look for in a steel door, and I'm going to kind of step back and let Ron start to tell you how to measure your door at home. People will come in and they'll say, can I put a new door in? What problems am I going to have? Uh, how big an opening do I have to have? Well, those are the problems that we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. And then on our next segment, we're actually going to get into the, the advantages of going to a steel or a fiberglass door versus a wood door and actually install one then. So Ron, I'll be the homeowner, I just walked in and I say I want to put a steel door or my entrance system is bad, it's falling apart, what should I do to uh, see if I can actually use a door system like you might have here? Okay, first thing you've got to do is you've got to know, you know what size you've got existing in your, in your okay. opening now, the front, back door, whatever. The easiest way is just measure the, just the door itself of what you've got in there. This door. 35 and 3 quarters, they call it a 36 inch door. It'll be either a 36, very few 34 inch doors anymore. Most of your front doors either be a 36 or a 32 <coughs> inch door. Those are the two most common. They do make other various sizes. And then you want to know the height. Standard height on a door is 80 inches. Okay, this one is 79, but then with a the threshold and it, on it, and it makes up for the 80 inches. Okay, the threshold is that thing that we're going to walk in when we come in. Yeah, we open the door, we'll show that a little bit more detail. That's the ba two main measurements you need to know. Okay, so you know, the jam thickness is pretty much standard now as it was 100 years ago. Okay, see, most people will come in, and what Ryan has said is, you know, make it easy. You know, just measure the door. People will come in because, as Ryan will tell you, there's molding or trim on the side of this or a casing. And people will say, well, I measured from the casing, or I tried to get back in and look at the frame. But Ron said, don't worry about it. Just tell us how wide the door is and how high the door is. Then we'll know if you've got a kind of a standard door. And like he said, most of them are going to take about 80 inches. Uh, it's when you get down into the 77 inches that we have a problem, because it's not a standard door and it will probably have to be trimmed. And that most places don't trim them. We'll have to order them in. It could take you about two weeks. Uh, as compared to maybe a couple of days to get another one of these doors. All right, Ron, we know how big the door is. Okay. Well, we'll open this door up here. I'll show you a few things on this door. Just let it prop right there. Okay, standard thickness is an inch and three quarter. That's what the steel <laughs> doors are today. That's what a lot of your old wood doors are. Uh, your, especially your exterior wood doors. Interior doors usually are an inch and three-eighths. You know, that's not too important if you're going to replace the whole system. But if you want to just replace a door, very few companies will make a steel door to fit into an old wood opening. Usually you've got to replace the frame and everything. <clears throat> okay. Now, like we said, we're talking about the threshold here. Threshold is the aluminum piece here you see on the bottom. The old doors, it'll have a wood threshold, very similar in style, 
The aluminum ones are a lot more durable than the old. A lot of the old ones, wood, they get split, they crack, just wear out from constant use. The advantages to the steel door is they're insulated. I don't know if Tom has gone over any of this. We're going to go ahead and whatever, now we'll just reinforce it. Okay, you know, <coughs> the steel doors are a blown in, solid base insulation. So you've got a lot of strength behind your steel skin. This door here like, happens to have what they call compression weather stripping. That the door just actually closes right against it. Mm -hmm. You can see how it gives there just enough to sink a real tight seal. Out of the, you know, your old doors, they don't have any weather stripping on them. You, you know, everybody's tried to put the felt weather stripping or foam oh, or yeah. whatever, try yeah, to it. seal them up. Now, can this be replaced if it goes and wears out in the future? Yeah. Yeah, the weather stripping on these can be replaced. It's a little tough to get it out. But the reason they brought that up is people will come in to us and they'll say, I've got a door home and I need weather stripping. What do I do? Best thing you can do is if you can bring us a little piece of it in where it's worn out. Because a good example, this insulation here that this door presses up against, it's all the way around and it's up on the top also. This won't fit any of these doors behind us. It's almost like trying to put a Ford onto well, a Chevy in some cases. So if a parts, if you, if you can bring us a little bit, then we know that they've got what they call a magnetic weather strip on some of the older ones. This one actually is going to press into its place. But if you can describe it or bring a little piece in, that'll really help us get you on the right track. That, or if you know the make of the door. Most of the That's time, right. on the edge of the door, either usually on the hinge side, but it'll be right on the edge of the door, there'll be a plate or a sticker or something that'll have the manufacturer of the door, whether it be Stanley, Pease, Everstraight, whoever, that'll be the biggest clue as to who manufactures. We're going to turn this around. We're okay. Can you zip in there a little bit? There you go. It's a benchmark. Yeah. See, so this here will show you. You know, it's the label. Uh, it tells you who it's manufactured by, and you get down here, and it tells you the the name of the door itself. It's a benchmark door. That's all we, if we could find that, you could tell us whether, there's basically two types, a compression weather stripping like this or a magnetic weather stripping. Those are the two most common. With that, we can 90% of the time or even more yes, come up right. with, a, with a correct molding. Right okay, now we've got this part. In this first segment, we're not going to run out of a lot of time. Or we're going to run out. So what we're going to do, I think, Ron, just to finish up, is we'll tell a lot more of the advantages of the steel door in the next program when we get ready to install it. But since we talked about locks, let's actually just take a lock and put it on this door. And some people will also they'll say to us, when we buy the steel door, will the old lock work? If it's a good lock, why not use it? Chances are very good that it, that it will work. So. Just because you get a new door doesn't mean you've got to go get a new lock. The old lock might be great. But Ron, I'll kind of hold this. You open this up how you want it, and you show us how to install a okay. lock on it. Okay. Well, we'll try and go about like this, see if we can't. First thing we're going to do is get this little shipping plate out of here. <coughs> this is just put on there when they ship the door to keep the door from coming open. They had a couple nails through it into the side of the jam there. Okay. Now what are all these placed up here for, Ron? Okay, those are for if you want to put your deadbolt in. It's already pre-cut. Uh, all you've got to do is just take the plates out, depending upon what style you want. The most common, like what Tom was showing, would just take this small plate at the top. Take the top two screws out, take a knife. This piece is actually scored a little bit, but cut it a little bit with a knife, and it'll snap right out. Okay, we'll go ahead and put an entrance lock in. We need to know the back set on this door. So we'll measure from the edge of the door over. It's two and three quarter. Okay, I don't so know that's if you right, can... right to the center of the hole. Can you see that right, John? We're not blocking you. Okay, so we know then that this thing we call the bolt has to be a two and three quarter bolt. Good example. Okay. Let's just show a small 
all two and three eighths in there and show what happens. Is that a two and three? Yeah. That's great. There, now, Jack, can we tip that? Is the light okay in there? Great. See, this is a two and three eighths bolt, and you can see that when we go to put that center lock in there, it's, it's not even close to being in the center. And then the other way, if you happen to have an older door with a two and three eighths that this would fit and you take a two and three quarter home, this hole then comes clear back over here and hits. It doesn't line up. Now, this is a two and three eighths bolt, but this is a two and three quarter back set. So now, Ron, get the one that really fits it. Okay. And we'll line it up and let you continue on. I'll move out of the way. Okay. Uh -huh. It's a different style, but you can see where the mechanism goes through. It's right in the exact center of the hole. It's right where we want it. Now, we'll tip that a little bit, Ron, for you. Put back this back out, out here. Go ahead and first thing you do is you got to start put the bolt in. That's first place to start with. Okay. Now your bolt on the edge of it. I don't know if you can get a good picture here. You'll see how this is beveled. The bevel is so whenever you close it that that thing will retract itself when it hits the strike plate that will mount onto the jam. If you've got that reversed, you go to close that door, it's never going to close because you'll be hitting the blunt side of it here. So make sure that's on angled towards the jam. Okay. Now, your knob, the key side, will go to the outside. That's it. almost did it backwards. There's that one. We won't even have to really tighten her in and use a bolt. I think they'll get the idea. Yeah, it's a little white piece. There you gotta go. put that knob on there until you get it aligned. See how easy? Um, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> it's just a little bit of a mess, all right. So basically, that's the door knob then. Or I have two, two screws in that'll go from the inside. They'll go through and hold the doorknob together. Let me yeah. take this back out here. We can show here the screws from the inside go through into these chambers here. They're threaded on the inside. And that's what actually holds the doorknob together. That's all there is then to installing the doorknob itself. And now, like I said, we have a strike plate then that will mount onto the door jam. Okay. Get this right over here. here. Now, again, your doors when they come in, it's already been cut for this. I don't know if you can see this, but there's this jam has actually been routed out, it's cut out. So there's a place you can't miss the little strike plate, which Ron's talking about. You can't miss with it because watch what happens. It just fits right in. It's pretty much standardized in the industry. And there we are. Okay. She fits right in nice. The only well. thing, just sometimes when they route these, they round the corners. Most of your strike plates are going to have basically a square corner. You have to take a knife or a chisel and just clean that corner out a little bit. And it fits a little flusher that way. Then. Yeah, because you want it to kind of, it'll recess in there smooth with your jam then. All you do is position that in there and then it just takes a small screw. And it all comes in the package so yep. you're ready to go. And that just so gets screwed. It's not screwed that tough a deal. Pretty basic. I put it in. Let's see. Basically, the average homeowner can replace the lock set, no problem. Now, how about replacing the whole door? Next week, when we come back, Ron, we're on our next, yeah. show, our next segment, we're going to actually, you know, how do you make this thing so it stays in the hole and it stays square? Uh, so it doesn't hit at the top and loose at the bottom. We want to go and we're going to learn how to, to shim the door. We'll balance the door. We're going to take an old door out and put a new door in. So, Ron, I appreciate your time today. Uh, on our next segment, if you'll join us, we're going to tell you why we like the steel door or the fiberglass door and the advantages. We'll tell you some of the advantages of the old wood doors that uh, have been around for a long, long time and are still on the market. And we'll actually install one 
Thank you for joining us. Tom Hudson from all around the house. Thanking you again, and we'll see you on our next segment, and we'll put this thing in. Thank you.